Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's antiwar.com. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Teens Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, go with agoristhosting.com. Number one, this is the state of New York. Number two, they have already proven that this particular jurisdiction has already proven how far above and beyond they will go to waste taxpayer dollars to keep dragging me through the freaking through the process for over for almost a, exactly a year at this point. We are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery, statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 151st episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this Philippines. at BIPCOT.org. That's what's been missing for the past I don't know how many weeks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? We're back. This is Jeremy. And as you heard, that's Dave. Yes, we have a Dave sighting tonight. Uh, Dave has finally returned yeah, we're after we're multiple weeks Wednesday. off. Yeah. And uh, Shane's here with us too tonight again. What's up, Shane? Hello. What's up? Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, no Andre tonight. I don't think Andre got the message that we decided at the last minute to do a show a night early, but with the schedule all of us have had lately this just worked out for the best anyway so yeah. Uh, yeah at this point it's basically just a chinese fire drill every week to put a show together because we're we're i think the next couple of months are all going to be stable as st- weirdly odd odd months of trying to find stabilization it's going to be rough yeah, well, we mentioned that on a couple of shows, and uh, I, I kept saying I was gonna do I was gonna do my best to try to keep us on track. And uh, as of right now, we're still two episodes ahead, so uh, we we still should be in decent shape. I mean, although who the hell knows what's going to go on in my life? Because well, everything is just a constant joy these days. But uh, I, I don't even want to get into that because by the time people the hear, York, by the, uh, by let's, the, let's not go down that road. By the time people hear this episode, more more crap might have happened, and I may have I may have gone completely postal. So let's save that. But uh, let's let's talk to you first, Dave. It has been it's been a quite a while because let's see, we had last week was the 150th. You weren't there for that. Uh, the week before <laughs> was Anthony Samaroff, and that was just uh, that was just Shane and I. Uh, the week before that was I think just uh, was that just Andre, you and I, Shane, I think. And then oh, yeah. two two weeks in a row, it was just Andre, Shane, and I. And the week before that, it was just Mance, Ra- Mance uh, Raider and I. So yeah, Dave, you've been gone for like seven episodes uh, yeah. at this point. <laughs> well, one forty five. I Mandy on one forty five. I think was the last time you had on. Yeah, no, yeah, Mandy was on the one hundred fiftieth. But I, I think I think Shane did. Uh, uh, Shane, Dave. Yeah, I think da- one forty five was the last one Dave was on. So yeah, what's up, man? What what the f- what the hell well, have you been doing? <laughs> well. <sighs> My, I'll, I'll, I want to be vague here so I don't, <laughs> we don't go down rabbit holes of explanation. Uh, I basically what I was doing in the winter, like my business had ramped that farming ramps down real hard in the winter. And then this is our first full grow season, essentially uh, at, at like where we know what we're doing, you know, cause I was an IT technician a couple of years ago. So it takes a couple of it takes a test season to really kind of figure what you're doing out. 
I, uh, I have heard that from multiple people. Yeah, but usually, 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 your first this, season, this, first season is completely shot because you're just you're literally just figuring out what the how how things work. Basically, it's like it's like the first time you play Mario versus the you know the hundredth time you play Mario, um, and I, the last month and a half have just been like. I'm probably doing three or four times as much work as I normally do. So it's, it's adjusting the scheduling for me has been rough, even though we statically record on Thursdays. Uh, my, my schedule is in such a flux right now that I can't even nail down hard t- times in the middle of the day. Like I've got to go tomorrow unexpectedly to go pick up tomatoes two hours away. So uh, the farm <laughs> life, huh? <laughs> yeah. And and here I am itching to get to it with all the crap I'm dealing with here. And you're just like, man, it's so you're, much you're work. going to. There is a light at the end of this tunnel, Jeremy. This New York hellhole. That once once you get out and you get out and you start getting your fingers in the dirt and you start planting stuff, you're you're gonna for really forget about all of that, and life's gonna become a lot more simpler, and you'll be able to really fix anything you've got in your life. This 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 been needing to be fixed, and that's that's what this has been a big experience for me is just fixing a lot of my inconsistencies, especially with procrastination. You can't do it with farming, so yeah, uh, that's uh, that's what I've heard, and uh, yeah, I mean. I, I I'm I'm kind of getting tired of people telling me there's a light at the end of the tunnel and uh, you know or or just just be patient it's going to come it's going to happen because as as I said today after a whole bunch of more crap happened <laughs> my my one of my initial responses was like please don't anybody say this to me again because once again I woke up and yeah it got worse you know <laughs> like every day it's like I I go to bed well, with, you know I go to bed with well, somebody way, telling me don't worry man it can't get much worse than this and then sure enough the next day it's like oh yeah it's worse <laughs> well bottom line your kids are healthy and living and breathing and running around and you know you have you're not out on the street not yet so, dude i had i had to start to go f- okay we weren't going to get into this but now you now you're pushing me down this path anyway i just started i started to no I, no no i, I understand to, i started to go fund me today which is something i was really trying to avoid because i was put in a position where yeah my kids have food in their bellies right now but next week may be an issue because of other things that have happened so like yeah it's it's getting pretty mm-hmm. dire man and yeah i know eventually i'll get out of here but i was talking it over with with jen well it's time. hard because you've kind of shut down your operations right to to kind of pack up and leave and the only thing that's really holding you there is the final sell on your house that's coming up shortly and the end of this court fandango i'm not i'm not even I've thinking about it. the court thing I'm, I'm right now i'm just focused on the uh on the whatchamacallit on the house because that that's the more pressing issue right now because i you know i don't have money <laughs> until i sell that i don't have money i mean the court case is still going to be there unfortunately and that could drag on and you know, i was talking about that last night what ha- what happens if you just pack up and leave i mean just let's just theoretically say that there I was could. someone else that was in your position well, no, and they I just could. packed up and left i could i've i've discussed this option with, with what people. would happen though I would spend more more likely than not most of my life as a wanted man because there'd be a warrant put out for my arrest and I would have that whole for menacing in New York. Yes, they're not going to come get you, though. Realistically, there's a good chance it's a misdemeanor, right? Yeah, there's a good chance they wouldn't spend the resources. But number one, this is the state of New York. Number two, they have already proven that this particular jurisdiction has already proven how far above and beyond they will go to waste taxpayer dollars to keep dragging me through the freaking through the process for over for almost a, exactly a year at this point. Uh, that's that's the joke, man. That's what I don't understand. This is so this is political targeting, in my opinion, at this point. Especially the way you're documenting it, I bet you they're watching all the videos. I hope they are. <laughs> I, I hope I hope they're getting an earful because uh, I've told my I told my lawyer the entire time that if he puts me on the stand at some point, all this crap's coming out anyway. I'm gonna say it all. <laughs> I don't care what you like because at that point I got nothing to lose, you know. And uh, it's just. Well, but anyway, man, I, like I said, I don't want to dwell. I, you're going to get out of this. I, in my I, opinion. again, I know. I, I think eventually, you're going to get out of this soon. But it, you mentioned the procrastination thing, which is funny because uh, I said it before. You know, Shane and I a couple of weeks ago talked to Anthony Samaroff about his procrastination book, and 
there's a lot of things that I, I learned from it right away. And I, I told him I needed to give it another read. I'm actually, I'm actually, I was supposed to be meeting up with Anthony this weekend. Uh, un- unfortunately, because of my current situation, I had to cancel those plans. So I'm hoping I still get a chance to see him while he's in town. But anyway, uh, the whole procrastination thing, part of it is, you know, focusing on, he doesn't, he doesn't take this direction. And I actually asked him about this and he, uh, he hadn't really thought of it. He was thinking in terms of other philosophies, but like the whole stoic approach of, you know, or any of the other philosophies that have the approach of only focus on what you, you know, what you have control over. And for me, I have extremely little control at the moment. And as somebody who, you know, has had a history of being a perfectionist and had issues with OCD and stuff like that, it's really hard for me to not feel in control. So when I only mm-hmm. have a very limited amount that I'm that I actually can control, just trying to stay focused on that, which is you know the the what what Anthony and other people who talk about this stuff recommend, which is make complete sense, but it's really hard to do in the moment. And for me, even though I know these things going in, it's really hard not to dwell on all this other crap and just go, Jesus Christ, really? It like my 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 real estate attorney told me at one point that I was just basically he said I was essentially playing a victim and like I, acting like this stuff was just happening to me and. I'm like, okay, fine. You know, maybe some of this stuff I understand is normal process. But at this point, like after more and more gets piled on, now he won't respond to my texts or my calls because I'm like, are you still going to tell me that this is what happens to everybody? <laughs> like really all the stupid shit that literally happens on a daily basis. Now that I find out more and more crap, that's keeping me it's not my fault. Nothing I've done wrong, but other people's screw ups or other people's laziness uh, all of which are getting paid money from from me somehow, some way, whether I'm paying them directly or I'm being extorted for it. But all of their screw ups yeah. and fuck ups are keep happening, and there's no uh, repercussions for them. I'm the only one who suffers repercussions. <laughs> so it sucks, man. Wow. Yeah, I'm cranky. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know, I told you what, like f- episode four of this podcast to escape from New York, and you should have done it then. <laughs> Yes, Dave, I know. So, well, anyway, so. But the plan, it took you a while to conceive a plan, but, you know, like, this is going to make you want, work that much harder when you finally do get out of this little this little spat. It's going to make you work that much harder at, 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 at getting to where you want to be. Yeah, I, I sure hope so. I mean. You know, you mentioned it before about like getting out and just getting your, you know, getting the fingers in the dirt. Like, yeah, man, I, I know I need to do that. And that's why I'm like, it's so itching to get out of here because even though the farm's still uh, a ways off, I mean, my, my whole goal was to get the hell out of here, get set up in Indiana and make sure wherever I rented, I had, you know, I was, I had the permission to start planting gardens and stuff there. So I can start, you know, doing some of the test stuff that you were talking about, uh, do it before I even get to the farm. So like I already yeah. have since so I already have a decent idea about the soil around there and uh, what you know what what I can successfully grow on a very small scale, and then hopefully uh, the learning curve once we actually purchase the farmland will be even shorter for us. <clears throat> so yeah, man, I'm, I'm you're dying also to do gonna want to you're you're gonna want to find all of the nurseries within forty five to fifty miles of your house that you can go and 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 really find out when they hit clearance time if you don't like when they cut all their prices 60 70 percent right so you can go down there like right the day of it and 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 just clean out and get all the best stuff and fruit trees if you'll buy as many you can get 300 400 fruit trees every two acres you know depending on what they are and that it's not immediate money right but in three years you're you got more money than you can <laughs> know what to do with because you've got seven or eight truckloads full of tangerines or whatever, you know, you know what? Oh, you cut out a little so. bit there, Dave, but I, I get what you're saying. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's all right. I no, I get, I get what you're saying. Sure. And, uh, yeah, that's part of, you know, getting out there and doing all the scouting and stuff that I plan on doing once I get there. And for me, I, 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 I I'm, I'm looking forward to it even more because, you know, as I've talked about plenty of times, the whole plan once we get there is for Jen to get a full time job and I get to play stay at home dad. So I get to do the Danilo game for a while and I'm psyched to be able to take them with me on all these adventures and go look for all this stuff and figure all this stuff out because well, that's that's well, that because they if you don't if you if you don't subscribe to Justin Rhodes on uh, YouTube, I don't know who that is. 
I don't subscribe to him up. I subscribe to probably a hundred or so people on YouTube. I don't watch any of their stuff. I, I've said this for the longest okay, time. I, I don't watch you. It sometimes takes me I a talk lot to, to actually crowd, watch Jeremy. you. Yeah. I, okay. It takes, <laughs> takes me a lot to watch YouTube. Basically, he he farms enough at the house to, to call it a job. But while he's there, he raises and teaches the kid how, kids how to farm. So basically, you know, six, seven years old, these kids are running and, and they're in changing stuff, inventing stuff. It's wild, man. He's he's doing it right. Well, I, I will definitely check him out then because, uh, yeah, that's that's I mean, that's just the kind of stuff I want to do because we've. I've just noticed we've mic hogged so hard and I haven't even thanked Shane for covering my ass essentially for the last, <laughs> what, <laughs> six episodes or so. Yeah. Yeah. So, something like that. Yeah. He's done six. In a row, thank I you, man. I, I, I'm glad we, we, you know, we were all discussing, you know, potential people that could kind of fill that spot and you just kind of perfectly was just like blue right there. And I was like, I like Shane. I don't agree with Shane on everything. And that's perfect. I hate agreeance. So yes, pick Shane. <laughs> So I, which well, is why no David, problem. I've been here uh, so long. Yeah, it's great to be here, and I this is one of my favorite podcasts, and it's awesome to be a part of it. So I well, thanks for the invite. Isn't agreement so boring? I mean, as long as we agree to not hit each other or steal each other's stuff, it's like let's we can be friends and let's talk about other every other stuff. Let's let's do, let's have diverse opinions. Everybody in this world, it, it depend. It, I've seen not everybody, most they just they want mirrors, and I hate it. So. I uh, I like people that are true to themselves. Well, I, I think I, I think we've covered that here. I think all of us, <laughs> all all of the hosts throughout this SOL history, because now what we've had five altogether. I guess uh, I think all of us have, have always been true to that part. <laughs> I don't think you know. I never think about this else. show being like in a Wikipedia or whatever. You know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think we've had five. Yeah. Yeah, we started out with three, one left. We added a, th we added another one, and now we've added another one. So it's great. Anyway, so yeah. Unless yeah, you count the one or two episodes that Donnie has filled in or spot host. No, I'm talking about actual host hosts, like people that we've actually asked okay, to, be, yeah, yeah, to be, yeah, actual to be, hosts, to be, yeah, to be, to be like permanent members of the team type of deal. But yeah, so of course, yeah, and I of course too am very thankful because it's it's nice to have somebody uh, like Shane that number one I, I enjoy talking to because him and I do the Freedom Fiends together. We're actually supposed to record an episode of that tonight after we do the show, uh, and we always have fun doing those. And mm -hmm. it's also good it's also good to have somebody that is uh, especially who's been super reliable uh, through all of this because uh, you know I, I manage to show up pretty much every week regardless. Uh, but with Andres with Andres Law School and Dave's farming, you know it's it. it we, we we knew this was going to happen, so it's it's definitely been a nice uh, nice treat to have that where I where I know every week at least one person will respond to me pretty much right away and go yeah I'll be there. <laughs> so well we've we've basically deduced now that it, as long as there's two I don't know seedlings whatever you want to call us <laughs> co-host <laughs> uh, as long as there's at least two of us a show can happen and 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 just for content continuity or contingency I don't know what word plays there but continuity uh, I think is I think. Better one. Continuity. There we go. Just for continuity's sake, it's it's nice to have that assurance to know that your little baby that you put so much time in, you know, and you have put way more time in it uh, in it than me because you've edited uh, every episode since like thirty or forty. I can't remember even before that. So, I think I took that from Danilo at like ten or, or fifteen, somewhere around there. I took that job over and uh, started. Yeah, I mean, I can spot edit, but. Yeah, Danilo was he. You know, Danilo's job. He's a he's a eloquent speaker, man. I, and that's that's one of the main reasons I picked him to to start this show with yourself. You know, you got that golden voice, man. You, you're the golden boy. And uh, <laughs> not tonight. I feel like I I feel like I sound horrible because my voice has been so shot for the past couple of days. But uh, I appreciate. Well, you know, it sucks when we record on Fiend Phone. I hear your onboard mic, so. I have when I listen to the podcast, I'm like, man, Jeremy sounds so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, my yeah. Uh, my rig setup over here. <laughs> but I think even listening, hopefully, to Jeremy's we'll get you a farm and save up some money, and we can get both me and you a new recording studio, essentially at our houses. So, I think even listening to Jeremy's current voice through his onboard mic is probably still a better voice than I think I have 
Oh. So there's that. <laughs> oh, that's I I appreciate that saying. You but just no, gotta pound a bunch of Paul Malls you've, you've and gotta, get angry and drink coffee. Well, that's if he wants to sound just <laughs> like me. You. Uh, <laughs> it's funny that you said Paul Malls too. How did you know that's what I smoke? Because uh, <laughs> I actually do smoke Paul Malls. Uh, <laughs> I can sp- I can spot a Paul Mall man, buddy. Just trust me, that's, okay? That's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> I smoked for half my life. Yeah, because I don't th- I don't think I've ever mentioned that. That's pretty funny. That's what I smoke. Uh, <laughs> But no, Shane, I, th- I think you have a wonderful speaking voice. That's why I was actually, when you, when you originally uh, hopped on The Fiends, I was like, yeah, this is, because some people, since I, like, before I was a Fiends host, and I was just like, you know, I was a big fan, and I would listen, and like, new people would be added, I'd right away be like, oh, I like this person, or like, ah, I could do without this person. Uh, right right away, when you joined, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's a perfect fit. I'm like, he's got a great, he sounds great, so, and he's, you know, you, I've done, an, we've had you on this show. We had had you on the show enough before that. I know you've done other podcasts too. I'm like, he's, he's, he's seasoned more than most people out there. And I, you, he can hold, he can hold yeah, the, the conversation. It was like- so, and I think you're putting yourself down, my friend. I think you have a lovely speaking voice. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I oh, mean, no, I, don't, like, I, don't, I don't know if I'd put you on the level of like. It was knee jerk Shane. I know, too. but I, I would, we all like. I wouldn't put you on I the level I asked the question. Of, yeah, hold on. Here. I would. I don't know if I'd put you exactly on the level of like Merrick, you know, because I've explained before what Merrick's Le- Van Landingham's voice does to me. Uh, unfortunately, you know, no homo. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I just wish, I I wish uh, Merrick, Merrick is ruining his, his money shot, right? Merrick could just make a YouTube channel and just start reading any book that is free, you know, not copyrighted or anything. You know, they would, there's no way they could not take... He couldn't run ads through it, right? And get like two or three hour long books and just, he would have millions of views with his voice, dude. Especially the way he, you know, likes to emphasize everything. Oh, yeah. I, I I've tried to show. tell him, he just, he's like, man, I don't know. That's a lot of editing. You got to sit there and read the same chapter a bunch of times. I don't know. But he gave me a bunch of excuses instead of trying it out at least. I think I did a show with Merrick and Jeremy a long time ago, and that was back before I had my Audio Technica. I was just using like a headset mic, and uh, yeah. they sounded way better than I did. <laughs> but uh, as far as Jeremy's voice goes, I know Michael always comments on it about how it's uh, better than Barry White. <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, I think I think you might be exaggerating just a little bit there. You yeah. should hear Merrick in real life, man. It's it's you sound like you're ta- you're listening to a Civil War general talk or something. It's really wild, man. It's, I, st- I still have not dead I, on. I, I, I will meet that motherfucker sometime in the next year or two. Like that is my goal because we've but he's about a enough, he's fun. We, 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 we do, we, we speak on the phone and, uh, and through, uh, telegram and stuff plenty. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't got to hear the, uh, in, in person deal yet. One of these days. Um, but you might, Shane, you mentioned Michael. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, like I said, I, I definitely, I mean, I took it as a, took the compliment and then said, okay, you're obviously being, uh, you know, you're exaggerating quite a bit here, but it did make me chuckle. Cause the first time he, the first time he said it, I think he said he, he made, I made Barry White look like, or sound like Gilbert Gottfried. And that just made me laugh, especially because uh, I, ha- I have this huge affinity for Gilbert Gottfried so much to the so to the point that the first time I ever saw that meme floating around that said, you know, it said other than Morgan Freeman, who would you want? You know, because everybody obviously would pick Morgan Freeman. Who would who would you want to narrate your life? And everybody else is always picking these people with these amazing voices. And my answer right away was always Gilbert, God- Gilbert Gottfried, because that makes perfect sense. How is, how is your <laughs> knee jerk? Okay, Gil- Gilbert Gottfried would be horrifying after about a month. <laughs> How is your knee jock, knee jock, knee jerk, jerk reaction not James Earl Jones? Like, because, like I said, man, for for me, it it makes sense to me. And like, sure, he's the best. James Earl Jones is great. You know, Morgan Freeman's great. A whole bunch of people. Like, oh, I could think of a bunch of people that I, I whose voices I really dig. But you know, like I said, I've always had a I've I've always had one of those weird things for for Godfrey's voice. I always found it like so so amusing that I I could listen to Iago, it for hours. That's what I call him. Yeah. Well. Anyway, or, or the, what was but yeah, it? Shane, we were, we were talking about, you know, a couple of months ago about like, man, who could we pick? And like everyone, like, it was like, I was like, here's the people I want. And like, you were the number one list uh, on the list. And everyone was like, Shane, Shane, Shane. I was like, yep, let's ask him. So <laughs> even I, Danilo, I really I appreciate it. I think even, even Danilo chimed in on that one and, and voted for Shane. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, thanks guys. Yeah. I feel special now. Yeah. So yeah, we're definitely glad to have you here, man. It's uh yeah, man, you're a. Uh, uh, so, what's been going on since I've been gone, man? Like, uh, I know you had a new job, uh, and oh yeah, you're settling well, into that. Is, it, is everything still going good? Everything's going good. Uh, I'm settling in. It's like a four day work week. I work four ten hour days, so I've got Thursday, <laughs> Friday, Saturday off every week. It's really nice. Yeah, that's sweet. Well, I'll uh, 
I'll talk to you about a little side business you can start with those three days. Make you some side money <laughs> after the show. Hey, I could do some right. side money. I don't want everyone to steal my some idea. Top money and some bottom money. My IP, my IP. Inside outside money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! But anyway, yeah. get back. Get, so well, it's, hold on. It's I was like, I, I want to get four fourteens. That's insane. What's that? What's four fourteen? He said he wears four fourteen. Oh yeah, no four tens. I mean, four it's tens. forty hours. Oh four ten. Oh, oh my bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Oh, okay, I used to work four tens. It's it's you get used to it. Four four, four tens is always better though, because I, I there there was times in my life. What is it? Three. Uh, you try to do it in three days. So what does it end up being? Like thirteen and a quarter hours or something. You got to pull like that. I like, did a three day one too. It was it's, it just drains you. Yeah, man. exactly. That's what it's that's like what I that say. Boxing, the, you know, when they cut off those three extra rounds, it's like yeah, because yeah, that's that, the that same four, way. That fourth day that I was gaining from not working, I was sleeping the entire day away anyway from being so shot. <laughs> Yeah. from working the three days as hard as I did. So it was like, yeah, I might as well take it a little bit easier and do four tens and be happy. Like I could understand like a weekend hospital shift or something, you know, like in a, re a real bad area or whatever, where you're like, you're obviously going to need someone there for like a, a stretch of time dependently, you know, there all the time. So like I could see the cases for a three day, but man, it's rough. It is rough. I did it for a month and called it quits. But the four tens I did for three and a half years or four years at work and loved it, loved it. And then they, they made a stop. They made everybody at work go back to five because some Obamacare rule. Hmm. Thanks, Obama. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then I got let go because of Obamacare. Damn you, Obama. Oh, that's right. I remember you know, it's, it's hard not to yell at Obama, but, you know, guys, it's real hard to remember that he's just the guy that the Democrats put there. So he was just doing what the Democrats wanted him just to do. A, he was okay. Just if he would have stepped out of line, they would have put this next doofus in. Okay. I, it's just that's I, how the things work. I've been trying to say that for a long time, man. It's the same thing with Trump. Doesn't matter. What if they would have done? They would, all these things would have happened anyway if they had let somebody else be at the top of the at the top of the heat. Everyone's you know? sitting here talking like Trump's going to be able to change anything. And I'm sitting here telling you, and I've repeatedly said it on every podcast I've been on. Trump is an absolute abject fraud unless he does anything about the Federal Reserve that has every Americans and their kids with a noose around their neck. So that's that's it. He is a literal fraud unless he does something about that. Because if he wins, if they sweep in these midterm elections, he'll have literally the government, the whole government by the balls, the courts, all of it. Every, the whole shebang. Which is why if it happen. doesn't just get railroaded through, it'll be a like, it, he will be a fraud. And uh, 1984 kicks off. It was just a, uh, a couple of decades late. Well, yeah. I, I, I still don't, I, I can't recall seeing any. Although I, you know, admittedly I don't pay attention to as much as I used to as far as politics go. But I don't recall seeing anything from him via the Fed yet. Uh, I do. I do think I did just see. Was it either earlier today or maybe yesterday that the latest thing from him is now he? I don't know if it was another tweet of his or another just another public statement he made that all of a sudden he's uh, bring, you know just floating it back out there about how he thinks that uh, you know the, the U.S. should return to the gold standard and. You know, that on its face could be a positive thing, of course, uh, you know, because obviously that that is, a, you know, we've talked about stuff before how, you know, pretty much everything. That well, government I mean, if does you've is listened horrible, to Prof CJ, you've learned that bimetallism and stuff like that aren't, aren't real good secure. No, no, but it's still better. It's still <laughs> but, it's still headed in a better direction. Oh, no, right it's now. way better than. Yeah, so that's fiat what I'm, commie money. Well, that's what I'm saying. So the the fact that you know, even though it's obviously not ideal, especially with the government in control of it, it's still a better it's still a better situation than we are in now. Although, if you combine <laughs> that with his also, now, would you rather drown on. in the kiddie pool or the deep end? Well, hold on, because now his. Uh, <laughs> You, if you couple that with his other recent statements, all of a sudden reversing face again on the on the cannabis issue, where originally you know a couple months back he let uh, he let Sessions loose and basically just said you know he could do whatever he wants. Now apparently he's running he's running counter to that again, claiming that the states uh, you know he's making statements at least that the states should have their rights uh, should have their rights to make their own laws and that you know Sessions basically shouldn't interfere. And both of those things on their own, while obviously I'm no fan of Trump, and I've said it many, many, many times, uh, he, uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to, you know, boo any positive steps like this. However, both of those things happening and coming out from him right now 
to me, I don't know, seems more like cover to uh, to get the to get the heat off his back about the whole Syria issue because a lot of people are pissed off about the Syria issue. Well, so, I'm pissed off at him because the he said he might be thinking about now. It doesn't mean he's going to do it. This could be just bullshit. But he said something about possibly rejoining the TPP if they would change a few terms. Yes, that's that, that was said too oh, as wow. well. Um, like that, I I, I kind of got sick at my stomach seeing that because I I don't know if Trump is just a ploy for them to just trick people into just forgetting that all this stuff is rolling out. And and let me explain what I mean by that. Trump can say we're stopping something and then six months later said, hey, you know, I renegotiated a few things. It's going to be great now and people are going to buy it. So well, look, he doesn't he doesn't even have to wait that long. For instead some- of o- Obama putting it out, it's a Trump packaging it. So he's going to be it's going to be great. It's going to be, you know, well, that's how <sighs> it, that's look, how some of the things that Obama continued after Bush, he was able to push through so easily because they were things that but because towards the end of Bush's presidency, everybody was hating him again. Like he obviously got the huge Bush, uh, the boost after 9-11 and uh, everybody loved him for a while. And then the people started doing the hanging Bush in effigy at all of at all the rallies and stuff. And everybody was hating him. The Tea Party was hating him. Everybody was hating him. And uh, Obama was able to... Have you to- heard more and more about that serious stuff? Well, the whole, I'll get to that in a second. But the I was just going to say, because with, with, that's what happened with Obama. Like, he was able to push certain things through because because it came from him, the leftists were like, oh, okay, cool. Even though if Bush had done the exact same thing, and in certain instances, Bush was trying to do the same exact thing that they freaked out about. Yeah. When Obama did it, they were like, oh, cool. <laughs> And now we can see a year plus into the Trump's presidency that even though this is what I and a bunch of others called at the very beginning and said, you watch, this is exactly what's going to happen. And we kept getting called naive and getting called stupid and getting called cucks and saying we didn't know what we were talking about. And it just we had to stop Hillary, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I guarantee you, you're going to watch. You're going to see because it doesn't matter. Like we couldn't have have Hillary. Dude. (laughs) At this point in time, with everything that's going on, now that you add the, the TPP talk and all, and the uh, the fact that he has on his own now floated the idea of uh, increasing the Dreamer thing and like all of the stuff that he's finding ways to backtrack on, kind of like you know Reagan. Wait, wait, he's Reagan thinking about was, increasing the Dreamer thing. He offered it to the, he I, offered it to the Democrats and oh, they okay. turned it down because it was coming from him. But they offered he offered. So do you think that he that's offered a political a play so that? In the primaries, they can go out and say, "Hey, they turned down our DACA deal." I'm we sure. I'm sure they can know, try, them. but they the the, the 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 Democrats already started spinning it in the other direction. But anyway, all these things that keep happening, uh, and the Syria thing too. That that's what I was tra- starting to say before. It, it didn't even take that long. Like normally, yes, six months down the road, they could get away with a lot more, like you were describing. But just look what happened with Syria. It was only a few weeks ago. I know Alex Jones flipped his. But Absolute it was, it was, shit. It was only a few weeks ago <laughs> that Trump announced that uh, that that he was, you know, he, we should really, you know, talking about really should get out of Syria again, or and we're going to get out of there. You, you know, pretty much you can guarantee it type stuff. And then a day or two later is when Tillerson came out and was like, "Yeah, that's no, 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 that's that's not that's not that's not how it's going to happen." We'll see, I've only and then heard- he got fired. But this, the plan is still going on, yeah. so much so that a week after that, all of a sudden, Trump completely reverses course and is like, yeah, we're going to go bomb the shit out of these folks now. <laughs> he, went from yeah. claiming, okay. he went from claiming they were go- we, that the U.S. was going to pull out to having Tillerson fired over, over contradicting that statement by saying, no, no, we, we can't pull out publicly if I had him fired and then reverse course anyway if this isn't like hardcore evidence of the deep state or whatever you or just the, the bureaucracy whatever you want to call it at work like how much more how much more evidence do you need like this completely like this reversal that quickly is it, with everything else involved is like the, you know th- this, this is the last time i'll ever sign a bill like this like this is what's was why not just say guys this has to change or i'm not signing it well yeah sorry but exa- and stick to your guns th- this was going to happen regardless i honestly think at this I, point something tells me some generals came in and was like look this is the best play here that's that's basically probably how he's making all his decisions now well, he surrounded is, is himself by him since the beginning, generals. although he's fired a bunch of them. But he still has a bunch of them around. And Here's he's got the only Mattis. thing that makes me sick. And uh, what's the I other have dude's four, name? I have, have well, uh, Kelly, General Kelly. Ugh. Kelly's still there. Yeah, Kelly's oh. still there too, right? Uh, it makes me sick that Mattis and Kelly are still there. Anyways, look, I've got four perspectives on Syria. One, I heard that it was basically all... One, I heard, 
I heard it was all basically one for show uh, because the war, you know, the Republicans want war, you know. Or uh, two, the Dems want war too. A strategical strike on. They just want war directly with with Russia. <laughs> the Republicans, the base, they want yeah. war with they want war with Iran, and they'll take they'll take war well, with Syria. They're not as keen on well, war with directly yeah, with Russia, and they know the, Russia's as the only as the Dems are going to fund. Yeah. Well, look. Either way, well, well, well I've I've heard that it, that that Trump tomahawked like a couple of deep state bunker ish situations that they had. That's why like no one died or anything was reported. I did hear no casualties. Uh, I did hear that I, floated. Yeah. Which then which doesn't heard, say a lot for the, the amount of firepower thing, they they fucking wasted <laughs> on that fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you just, I think what we're watching is a slow play out of the Greater Israel Project happening. If you're not familiar with that, just go look it up. I think that's what we're seeing happening here. Like they're going to try to cause provocations in these certain areas so they can destabilize them, so they can just keep doing what they're doing to Gaza to keep growing Israel. Well, and yeah, this that's is just all another, like another part of that deep state agenda, which is the the puppet master pulling the strings at the top of the president. And uh, I don't think no matter who the president is, it's going to make that much of a difference because they're still just a puppet for the deep state. Well, yeah. How do you, yeah, you're right. How do you get to that point without being in some st state of compromise? This is why I think an AI backed government is going to come through, but sadly, I don't, I don't think the right people are going to control it. And that, and that's, what's going to happen because people are going to lose all faith in human people running the system. People have like, why can't a computer do all this? A good percentage of the population has seemingly lost faith in in basically in in humans in general because they you know they keep demanding for this amorphous entity called government to solve all their problems and not people, <laughs> not individually with the with it with it the, between themselves and stuff like that. Uh, I think people have already a lot of people have already given up, unfortunately. Other and other, plenty of others have given up for because they watch all those people and like oh we're doomed because like you know people like us so we're like fuck we're doomed because look at all these assholes out there giving away just freely giving away not only their, their freedom but everybody yeah, yeah. else they're giving away everybody else's freedom freely. The 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 crab bucket is the most is sad but it is the most. Uh, it's it's probably the most apropos, you know analogy for what human or at least humanity is caught in right now and under our current systems uh is everything is such in the tragedy of commons in the commons so to say that it's is subject to the tragedy of of the commons that and there's no one knows how to stop so everybody just is like screw it i'm just gonna pretend like i'm not abusing this or doing this or you know so like <sighs> it's sad that's what that's the this the sad part about communism and statism and all other forms of public ownership is, is it puts all of these scarce resources sources to the tragedy of the commons when, when no one owns it and can price it correctly or whatnot, uh, it, it, get, it gets abused. So that's what's happening with literally everything all the way up to authority and government and everything. So that's, why everything is going to shit so fast no one owns anything unfortunately it hasn't gone fast enough there we're, st we're still stuck in the the, the boy I, I the the other analogy that rings true way too often unfortunately is the frog in the boiling pot you know i i've i've mentioned this multiple times i, I truly believe that the masterminds or whatever you know like i i don't believe there's one single entity that has been pushing for the forward the the U.S. government and or the idea of a world government. There's multiple factions who all want a similar thing, but they'll end up fighting amongst themselves if they ever obtain that. So it's not like they're to all on it. Yeah, they're not all on the same page, yeah. but there this has is that there triage? has been. A, is that the right term? What's that? Is, is triage the right term? <laughs> What's for what? Triage is a hospital for what? Term. What's that? Um, well, no, well, it, it doesn't have two meanings, sir. No, that's a, the the uh, what should we call? It? I think uh, you're thinking of another try word, and I can't even think of it at the moment. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm on to something, Dave. Hold on. Um, the fact that uh, go ahead, sorry. Just be, but just because these people aren't all on the same page uh, to the fact that they will end up warring at some point, they have been able to agree enough over time on certain things that all get them closer to all of their goals, and you know things like 
a one world government you know you can call it a conspiracy theory or what you want but that is a goal of many of many of the of the elites because they feel the more centralized control they have the better that's the way these type of people think same way a lot of those you know the the, 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 the fondling fathers a lot of them thought that same way too <laughs> Uh, you know, for for all the glory he fucking got, James Madison, that motherfucker wanted a goddamn centralized government. He fucking got it. So fuck him. <laughs> yeah. And the horse so he rode. What's that? What's that? The articles trade deal Confederacy were so deals. much better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would. I just wish like half the states would have been like, nah, let's just run under the Articles of Confederacy, uh, just as an experiment. But we'll never know because. Yeah, but- but yeah. So, but Wars anyways, the, what, what I, where I was driving at with that before. So, like, you know, that that's why I I, I keep saying I, I don't think it matters because these people have been at it for so long, and they really, I really believe that 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 group or groups of people who have been in the bureaucracy in the, the deep state or whatever for decades, because you can find them. There's plenty of them there that have been around so much longer than any of these congressmen and senators that people point to. And go, oh, the lifetime, the life, the lifers like that. Yeah, they're oh, yeah, these appointed people like. Well, no, 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 that's not, not, not even the, the appointed the, ones. No, I'm talking about the congressmen and senators because a lot of people will point to that, like the ones who have been in Congress or, or who have been What's in the, the guy? Senate. What's the guy? He's like bar- Kissinger. He's barely alive. He looks yeah. like a damn troll. <laughs> yeah, but 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 I'm talking about the the elected officials. People, a lot of people will point to them and be like, well, you know, people like that are the problem. The ones who've been there for 20 or 30 years, and it's like, no, yeah, there are there are some of those, but. Out of the 535, they aren't anywhere near even close to a, a, a part of a majority, I think. Uh, uh, but when you look at the bureaucracies, all the different alphabet soups agencies, there are so many people on so many from like middle, middle level management upward that have been there for decades. And it's it's rampant in every one of these situations. So they're it, the ones who control still, everything. It's a joke, right? But It's still a joke because we don't even own our own money. So... We're, According to we're the being government, forced to use someone else's money. We don't so actually that own tells anything. Me that we're not in control of our yeah, we're not in control of our government. So uh, here's the problem, uh, guys. <laughs> we're being forced to use other people's product via like socialist slash fascist. It's like a mixture of the two. It's like <laughs> fascistic socialism. It's a, it is a very interesting mix. I've I, I long before uh, I mean long before the the, the alt right and the late and the and the and the uh, anti va became a huge thing like they have in the past year or two and uh, you know fascists and not Nazi got st- were being thrown around on a regular basis. I, I for a long time once I started to piece all these things together like that was just the simplest terms that I could put it was always like, yeah, it's some kind of, it's like a weird quasi fascist socialist. I don't, you can't really describe it, man. They've, they've, they've managed to create this thing that really hasn't existed anywhere else. Uh, so you gotta get, I guess you gotta what, give them some props is, for that, but hold on. But that, but that brings back to the other point. Forced syndicalism. That's what it is. All right. Maybe we, that could be argued, I guess, but I was going to say that that brings me back to the other point that I never finished before was that the, these groups that have been doing this and pointing everything in this certain direction for all these decades, uh, you know, for the the, the, the the couple of goals that that make sense to all of all all of them, uh, they've learned from all the other failed nation states in that same timeline. Yeah, what the not ones to that do. The, yeah, the ones who have tried to race to power, the ones who have tried to grab too much too quickly. I really believe that the the, the people behind the US government have really learned and and that's why they are probably I mean I, I often refer to them as the I mean they are. The US government is the world's largest terrorist organization like it, the it's that it, the world has ever seen it's the largest one the world's ever seen. Well we but these we, people we, we are good at what they do. Talking about They're it the dangerous. Other day. They're uh, well, sorry. Go listen ahead. to this perspective here for a second uh, about America. I've thought about this, why America it keeps going because technically it technically you can go look at points of failure where almost everything else in the world would have failed. What has happened in America is it is always in, and constantly in a state of permanent revolution. So much so that it's become normal life. People don't even know that they're in a revolution at all times. So the king can always be killed faster essentially than an entire revolt and a a unification of the people against it can happen so like that's what the power of democracy is to keep people divided 
against who's running the show and mad at the person that they are choosing to run the show, quote unquote, every so often. Because they have they have more time to focus on, yeah, the, the particular individual and then he's gone and then it's like, oh, somebody else. And yeah. Exactly. Versus and, and by the time he's gone, it's somebody else. But most president's policies take 15 years to feel. So we're just now actually feeling what? The beginning of Obama's policies. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because that, you know, we were talking about Trump specifically before. And that, that's one of the things I tried to point out when when everybody got all excited and then got mad at people like me who were trying to poo poo the whole so-called tax cuts. And I was like, OK, remember how I've been pointing to Reagan this whole time and saying, look at the similarities. Watch as soon as he announced the tax cuts. I'm like, watch, watch what's going to happen. Number one, less than a week or so, like a week to it the most later, he auto, he starts talking about the tariff game. It's like, OK, that's how he's going to balance them out right away to start number one which isn't good for us and tariff wars always precede actual wars Go well, okay. grab a history book and prove me the, wrong the, please prove me i wasn't wrong. E i wasn't even taking it that far but sure throw that into the mix too so you have that and then on top of that so uh, something's at play that we're not being told so we're playing with a half a deck here and that's the problem well we always in are. my opinion we're never we're never we're never told anywhere near half the story we can't be People, people, because because that, I, I that, think the, 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 the U.S. No, government is so bankrupt the and revolts. broke right now that they can't even fund their military, oh, and they, the whole world knows it except for American citizens. See, I don't think I, I. I mean, I think that's partially true, but I don't really think that they can't fund the military because if they, I think. If, if, if they really believe that they couldn't fund it anymore, then there would not be these giant wastes of uh, not just not just the stuff with Syria, like you were talking about, like the possible idea that it was just done to like, you know, basically just be a, a smokescreen or, you know, whatever, and basically just waste some missiles because they do that every year in order to keep the budget uh, increasing every year. They have to fire off a ton of crap and get rid of a ton of extra shit at the end of every year that they just waste. If they really believe that their funding was cut off because and they, they could not price. acquire anymore, they <laughs> They would not be doing that because they would be like, we exactly. need this shit because this is the only thing that keeps us in power. So I don't I don't see that as being I mean, I might be wrong, but I don't see that as being very re realistic. Uh, I think they're still quite well, the confident they can the, get the money they need uh, for whatever they here's want. Here's what sucks and no one can see it, right? We're not in command and conquer or conquest world or risk or whatever. We're we're. They call America the world police, but what they are, are the world g global government initiators. So all they do is go destabilize this place, blow it all to shit and back, and then put their people in there are going to allow world government. And that's all that that's all that it is. That's all America is used for. And all the people that pay taxes are paying to, to keep that system propped up. And they've got three states left to go, and they're talking about a unification uh a, a, a unification, re unification with the Koreans. The, yeah, the reunification of the Koreas. And co so we have Korea, Iran, and Cuba, right? Those three nations Syria are the only three nations that do not have... Oh, okay, there you go. So now you know why they're pushing for f those four nations to basically collapse. Syria, Iran, and, and Russia is pushing them back because Russia is about to make some pulls out, out of the, the world governments. Because they're getting blackballed, they're just going to oh. say, "Screw you guys, whatever." Well, yeah, because look at uh, think what you want about Putin and Russia, but if you look at what's actually transpired, uh, especially since World War II, I mean, yes, Stalin was an evil motherfucker, and uh, he did a lot of bad shit. And the fact that Roosevelt and then even Truman after, like they, like all these people, like they sidled, you know, they sidled up to these motherfuckers, and they gave, you know, the horrible shit. But what's happened since and the the continue, you know, the, the between the, the Cold War, which was largely, uh, you know, bullshit because the, the U.S. was lying through a lot of it and like making and making it seem like Russia actually had kind of like they do today when they, you know, the weapons of mass destruction thing. They were always ramping up yeah. the uh, the nuclear arsenal here at home because they were claiming They're gonna beat us to the moon. They were claiming that they had this, they had uh, intel that Russia had all this other stuff, which was never true. Which is why, when you know the alleged end of the Cold War happened with Reagan and Gorbachev and all that shit, the uh, what call it when when the uh, when it was supposed to be you know when they were supposed to get rid of cer certain things and the and the and the nuclear uh, what's the term. Uh, 
not talk down, um, whatever, when they start nuclear. disarming, nuclear disarmament, sorry, um, like trying to do that. That's why the gap was still so fucking huge because it's like, yeah, you guys have been lying the whole fucking time. You could have blown up the, like the US could have blown up the entire world like how many times over and Russia never would have been able to do a thing. <laughs> but that entire time, and a even since fell then, in Philadelphia yeah, once. But that entire like, time. It, it, didn't, it didn't go off. <laughs> but that entire time and since then, the U.S. and NATO has continuously encroached closer and closer and closer to Russia. And they are like, they are openly like it, you can't and nobody would nobody would not take that as a threat. <laughs> like, I know that's a double negative, but like, well, OK. All right. I run under a bunch of different auspices, but one of them is that if you're in the world government, then your entire government is essentially hijacked because that's what they do. So the United Nations, Russia is part of the United Nations. Putin's been in power for what, 18 years? Now? I, I don't know, Shane. How long has Putin been in there? It I feels like at least know. a decade and a half. I think Putin, it's been a while. I could have swore he was in for a little while. And then didn't he switch out and then he switched back in again? But I think when well, it started, there's two was, different roles. He was like prime minister and then he was president. Yeah, but no, he's I, I, I think know. he's flipped back and forth once or twice. But he yeah, he started somewhere in the early 2000s, I believe. Um, I can't remember well, exactly. And if, is, is, if he's still in the United Nations, right, that means that he has to respond to any of those war treaties they have him in. So the problem. But yeah, but they, they, they get more pushback than anybody the else on the United is, Nations because they're always standing yeah. alone. Well, I, I know they get bullied. I, I, they get bullied pretty hard, but I think it's still all a show kind of. To, to jockey to, to destabilize oh. these areas. Oh, sorry, sorry, Shane. What, what, you, what are you going to say? I do believe when he said it's all a show because, you know, um, you've got like not only the UN stuff going on, but like the whole economic stuff going on too. Because you mentioned the, the TPP earlier, the Trans Pacific Partnership. And um, it's, it, this they could kind of end up dividing with this whole BRICS versus IMF thing, but it could be like, um, just for the show, you know, it's like a false dichotomy that we're supposed to buy into when really um, it's that uh, the deep state, Rothschild, New World Order, you know, the people that own all the central banks that are pulling these strings in the first place. So I do think that this could be, like Dave said, it's just part of the show. It's supposed to look like they're in opposition to each other when really at the top, it's all part of the plan. I mean, just... Just think about the levels of 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 secret societies you have to be to be to get into the KGB. Just I mean, just think of that. Just just for five seconds. You don't just get pulled. Number one, you gotta be in the military, which is a secret society. Okay. Then number two, you have to be most likely in an officer class or test high enough to get put into some some special advanced place. And then that's a, another essentially secret society. Then you get pulled in the KGB or whatever. He was SB. Is he still there? Okay. So uh, this, the Russians are the Russians are coming after me. Dave got droned. Sorry, sorry. The Russians are coming after me, and Trump's nuking Syria. And yeah, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry, guys. Wow, I was just not recording for myself for that whole time. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what I was trying to say was the uh, I, I used to hold the opinion that it was all for show. That was for show that type of like this type of stuff. And there really wasn't that animosity. But the more and more I study history and also going back to what I was referring to earlier in regards to the you know certain factions all wanting a couple of similar things so they'll help each other get there but on the large scale they'll they'll still fight it you know they don't agree on a, a lot of the other bigger issues and they'll still fight it out i just i i don't really i don't buy that as much anymore i'm not saying it's not true but i have less i have less faith i guess that it is uh, because just the, the, you know, just like anything else, like the sheer amount of, uh, you know, secrecy. It's interdimensional beast. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't, uh, like I yeah. said, I, I think, I think some of it is definitely scripted and at the very, I mean, All right, it's the, aliens, lizards, robots, a, uh, Nephilim or what Shane, did I leave something out here? What's <laughs> when did I become the expert? G oh, this? Jews. 
uh, Masons. Okay, uh, it's one of these. Yeah. It's one of these nine people or eight people. It's one of them. Interdimensional. La- it's probably the interdimensional lizards, man. It has to be if you think about it. Oh yeah, the it's real hard. Oh, the Anunnaki. There you go. I did, there's another one. I didn't even think about the Anunnaki. Don't bring in the reds or the the browns or the yellows. <clears throat> Uh, well, like I said, man, I, I, I mean, it, it might be the case, but I, I don't, I, I, I don't think it's, I think, I, I think, I think, uh, there is a lot of scripting in regards to, especially each individual government and the propaganda that they present their, their own citizenry and maybe some of the citizenry in surrounding areas as well. Uh, like that stuff's definitely scripted. You know, the U S does it with the, with what they tell people about. I think a lot of the on. economy stuff is scripted, but the war stuff between nations, I think is kind of, I've had deep discussions with people about this. There's no way you could run a proper military backed society without a legit complete brainwashed military chain of command wise because the minute that breaks down your society that you're quote unquote leeching off of breaks down so the goal is to set up a military class that you can leech off of and that's what they've done and you have to keep that military class completely satiated and 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 asleep at, at the wheel without realizing it and that's what the american military is at right now if they knew what was going on truly it would stop. Well, I would like to think so. Although, you know, I mean, no, I mean, like, well, dude, it's the it's the the tiny dot. One of I, I hate to give Larp and Rose a damn video oh, plug, but it's the please. tiny dot. The fact that you have to go there, it's the, the tiny dot video, with dude, the, with the name calling. Come on, man. Anyway, <laughs> he, he's still like I, I mean, as much as as much as I can't stand, he Mal- blocked me. I'm calling him names. As much as as much Sorry. as I can't stand mauling you anymore, I still give him plenty of credit for all the stuff he put out years ago that really helped me along in my journey. And uh, Larkin's the same way. I don't necessarily agree with him on as much as I used to anymore, but I still give him plenty of credit for the stuff that he introduced me to. Well, the on. soldiers will at, at some point mutiny, and then they become the real. You know, well, I mean, there's, you know, what military juntas, you know, there's always the threat of that, I guess. Yeah. But the, you know, yeah. coup. Yeah. Oh, coup. Yeah. What's, what's a junta? Why, why am I thinking of that term? I know that's another one. Uh, I have <laughs> Either and, way, we need to wrap up. Yeah. You got y'all's fiends show. Yeah, we we probably should uh, get close again. I just looked at the time. Yeah, this uh, this conversation I actually took June two was my code word time to look at the time. Sorry. Spectacular. <laughs> that uh, this actually took a turn I did not see coming, but you know, uh, <laughs> interesting conversation. I guess uh, I hope everybody hope everybody else enjoyed listening to it. But uh, so yeah, so we'll get closing out. Uh, thank thanks guys for uh, showing up tonight and doing this. And uh, Dave, it was as much as I poke fun at you, it it, it was good to have you back, man. We haven't. Uh, it, it, I, I, I I honestly, until we started counting it out earlier, I didn't realize. Like I knew it had been a few weeks, but like when we started counting it out, I'm like, holy crap! <laughs> you really yeah, I didn't realize it either, of, man. You really I, missed a bunch of shows in a row. So uh, so yeah, it is, I was it is gonna, good to have you I was back. starting to think. I was like, well, well, thank you, man. I was, uh, and thank you, Shane, for filling in so much, man. Uh, I uh, I was I was like gonna start yelling if I couldn't get on a show soon because you know, believe it or not, this is one of the highlights of my week. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you did it's actually. Like the, in your defense, you did two two of these two of these weeks. You actually did have plans to be here, and it was only like an hour or two beforehand. You got called away with something you couldn't avoid. So, you know, it happens, man. Well, and I try not to make plans uh, and and break them. So, you know, I, it really pisses me off when I do. Well, I uh, like I said, I, well, I appreciate that, and yeah, so it's good to have you back. And uh, Shane, since 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 Dave and I monopolize the show as usual, uh, do you have anything you want to say before we get going, man? <laughs> well, well, we mentioned you know Trump draining the swamp earlier, which he's not really seemed to be trying to do. But even I think even if we did drain the swamp and in the Fed, that we would still kind of have to go against that global banking cartel, you know, that wants a central bank in all these countries. So, but I do think, you know, that's one of the first baby steps we need to take. So yeah, drain the swamp in the Fed. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm all I just for don't it. know just don't know if many happening. people can, I don't know if many people can conceptualize what's I, 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 I have two, I have two, wor- I have two words, John motherfucking Bolton. All right. That right there ain't going to happen, man. Like the fact that that motherfucker, <laughs> the fact that Trump brought that motherfucker back. Yeah. Like that, that should just tell you all you need to know about I, I, how I things just, are going to go from here on out. I went in my bedroom and laid down in the bed 
It I, just was like I said it before. <laughs> I said it again. I was, I was recently on James Weeks's uh, podcast without a spook, and we actually ended up talking about Trump and Syria and a whole bunch of stuff like that. And uh, you know, I said it. I said it. I think I said it on there. Like, you know, I've said for the longest time. Like, you know, I don't obviously like pretty much any politicians and uh, I find faults with all of them, even though it's supposedly good ones. Uh, you know, I've, I've definitely picked apart, uh, you know, the, the we've picked, we've picked apart the polls on this show plenty of times, um, Rand and Ron, but, uh, of all of them, you know, when, like when I think like first thing, when I think of each one of them, like usually evil doesn't come to mind with all of them, but like Hillary Clinton, Always like I think that I think she, I think that thing I don't she's not a woman I whatever the fuck she is it was she the is, she is pure evil evil from that bitch but she she's yes. pure, she's pure evil but you just see it then like <laughs> close behind her another name that just because of the history that strikes fear in my fucking heart knowing he has any type of power whatsoever is John fucking Bolton. <laughs> Because that guy, Buddy, when I saw that, that guy I, I has never a, seen a I war. It was a fake news headline. That when that guy has never seen a war that he wasn't wetting his pants to send other people to die in. Like I never. <laughs> he is just fucking. He he is a horrible, horrible, horrible human being. And like when I saw that, I, I was like, holy fuck! Like, is, am I still? People still don't believe me about the Trump when I said when I've been saying this whole time. You still don't believe me, John fucking Bolton. Come on. Come on. I don't know, man. Like, John Bolton is just... That one hurt me. I got to be honest with you. I was like, who Who and what? Who, what? National security advisor. Are you fucking kidding me? The guy wants, the guy wants, the guy wants to nuke people in a, on a fucking, on a, you know, in a heartbeat. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, all right. I see. I'm getting fired up. Yeah, we gotta stop. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks again, uh, Dave, for showing up this week. Uh, thanks again for Shane for being here and uh, participating when we allowed you to. <laughs> um, but this has this has been a fun conversation. Like I said, I hope everybody else enjoyed it. Uh, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. And the Patreon's still up and running. We did miss uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I did catch us back up. We missed one week, but I managed to catch, catch us back up. And uh, the the bonus, the the extra bonus stuff is is still coming out now for our our uh, upper level Patreon level uh, uh, patrons as well. So uh, you know, go check that if you haven't already. Yeah, if you know how to program a Discord bot, please contact me in the plethora of ways that there you can contact me because oh, I'm retarded and don't that is it. yeah, that is one of the things we the Discord. We we haven't fully got it up and running yet. We were going to start doing live shows there, but we're, the, we're getting the there with that. Functional, but I, but I, it's not the bot doesn't work yet. We don't. We I don't think we need the bot to let people in and let them uh, hang out and listen. We'll, we'll figure that out soon. But anyway, everything else is there, and I've been putting uh, a ton of extra content out there. I've put a lot of early content out there too, so uh, you can you can still get all that stuff. I think for just for just for a dollar a month, if you don't want to go to the next level. But anyway, please consider going to check us out at Patreon slash Seeds of Liberty. So once again, thank you everybody, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace. This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon. And I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit, and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, the Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I am raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. 
I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com.